a joke. Can't talk about the truth. No. Give me a second. One more second. One more second. Oh, where'd that go? Um, oh. So I was just live on Instagram and um, cause I posted about Amanda earlier and her bullshit and um, people seem to be feeling a certain way about it. So let me break it down for everybody and why I feel the way I do, which I just did on Instagram and um, I, it's, it's just not posting. Look, like, I keep trying to post a video, and it says, something went wrong here. Please try again later. And I keep trying it and trying it and trying it. Because I don't I don't want to repeat myself, but, like, it's it doesn't it doesn't work. Um, so, I will repeat myself. And I hope people on Instagram are watching. Because I really wanted to do this on Instagram, which I did. But it didn't matter. Because, you know, whatever. But, um... With me and Amanda, I think everybody was really upset when we watched, like, the first, you know, few minutes of her story. Like, I was crying. Cody was crying. Like, it was, it's sad. It's really it's sad. Like, you know. And I have a weak spot for cancer. I think, every, obviously, everybody has a weak spot for cancer. I'm sure that everybody in this chat, in this world, everybody has lost somebody to cancer. Everybody, you know, um, and it's a sick, evil disease. And um, so it's it's just not me. I know that. Um, I mean, I've lost more people to cancer than may, probably most, I would say. But, um, you know, everyone's everyone has a friend or relative or a loved one or a clergy person or whatever that has... Has, that has succumbed to cancer. So with that being said, I was very sad 
and so was Kobe were crying. Like I think everybody was, you know. And then you come to find out, like you know, and she, her story about how she started, how her husband died, in um, you know, early 2022. When I hear early 2022, I think January, February. There was no clear cut date. Shit, it could have been March. I don't know. Um, um, and then in her defense post, which God, girl, you should never have wrote that because it made it a million times worse. But then she's saying how she was, you know, going to Razvan and started filming at the end of 2022. And in my head, that's like November, December. So that's crazy. It, it it's just it's really crazy to me. You know, Amanda is thirty one, and um, according to her, she was with him for twelve years, married for eight, together for twelve. So that that puts you at nineteen. He you came into my house. You touch my child. Um, <laughs> so that's a joke between me and her. So that's not part of my, um, not part of like what I'm saying right now. Amanda is the one on before the 90 days that we just watched. And, um, you know, before the 90 days is the worst of the worst of the franchises. Like the, the rate of return with people getting married or engaged is like 0 0.5. I think of all the people that were on 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. Um, I think John and Rachel are the only two people who are like genuine. I know Paul and Karini started on before. But they're not in a great place, obviously. Um, but they got married. And they, they went through the motions. I think um, I, Angela started on before with Michael. Um, so there's that. But, like, and I'm, I'm really trying to, like, think of other couples who were on before the 90 days that, like, are still together or made a thing of it. And I'm really upset by this. And, like, I have reasons for feeling the way I do. And it's just not about like the grieving husband. It, it, it's more to it, which I explained on Instagram, but Instagram will let me post my fucking live. So I got to do it over again. Um, I, no, Annie and David started on regular 90 day fiance. They were, they were never on before. The, Annie and David started on 90 day fiance proper. Um, and, and in my head, the only before couples I can think of are John and Rachel, Paul and Karini, and Angela and Michael. Um, and you know, you know, I've been covering the show since it started, and you guys know that nobody knows more than me about this show um, than anybody else in the rest of the world. Um, so it's wild to me. Uh, and please, if, if there is somebody else on before that, like, is really, you know, living a good life. Russ and Powell were on. Nope. See, guys, stop, please. Russ and Powell were on, like, season one of regular 90 Day Fiance before, before, before even started. Um, I'm not talking about people in the whole 90 day, free, 90 day fiance franchise. I am just talking about people who are spotlighted on before the 90 days. There are tons of people, not, I won't say tons, but there are a lot of people who have been on the show and are still together. Absolutely. But I'm, I'm just talking about before the 90 days in general, Jenny and Samit were, they started on the other way. So no. Kenny and Armando were on the other way. So, no. I can play this game all night with y'all. If you want to keep throwing couples out, I will, I will tell you what season they were on and, and what franchise. But specifically right now, I'm talking about 
before the 90 days. Um, so, and 90, and before 90 days, is anybody looking for a stepping stone into, you know, whatever world this is going to bring them to like endorsements, plastic, sir, look at Jasmine, right? Look, look how much work Jasmine's had done to her in, in a year since she's last been on like Jasmine has she's larissa and you know i'm not even trying to like dog larissa i love larissa um but you know jasmine now like you know she's got like the fillers like you know the bra you know you you see jasmine in those perfect and uh, i'm in those confessionals and she looks like a completely different person that's not my point. My point is going back to Amanda. Um, so she gets on the show. Now look. I'm not one to tell anybody how long someone should grieve. Especially over the loss of a spouse. Like, that that's up to anybody's discretion. And that's not for me to say, you know, oh, you didn't, you didn't grieve long enough. Mm, no, that's not, that's not my point. My point is that like, she got with this man like weeks after days during, I don't know. And you can't tell me that this woman didn't know what 90 day fiance was all about. Like, I love these cast members that are like, Oh, I never heard of this show. A friend told me about it. Oh, like stop. Stop with that. Stop with that nonsense. You know, your husband can't die in, in February. And then you by late March, April, you're with this other guy. But fine, whatever. It's cool. Whatever. I don't care, Amanda. But then you then you do it on this TV show that the whole world watches. That that doesn't raise any red flags to anybody. <laughs> like like am I like the, the smartest person in the world and all and all of you stupid? I don't know. Maybe I know too much about the show. I, I don't think that you guys are stupid. I don't. Um, some of you are. Um, <laughs> the people on Instagram, like God, like hooked on phonics did not work for them. Horrible. And like, look at my, my, my um, post on IG. All I did was say like from Amanda and I, I did like the um, eye rolling emoji because like, I didn't believe a word of it. But I wasn't going to say, like, you know, you're horrible. Um, then people were like, how could you How could you use an eye-rolling emoji? Uh, I'm like, because I don't believe a word of it. I don't believe a single word of it. <sighs> Give me a second. I'm still here. I, I you know. Nobody should go on 90 Day Fiance. I honestly can't believe how this show is still on. And like, they're still ingratiating the network. And I was, you all know me, I was 90 Day Fiance's biggest trumpeteer. Like, you know, this is the best show ever. Boop, 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 boop. Like that shit. Um, You know, according to, and you know what, Noel, the thing is, I know how much they make. I know what they pay the cast members, especially on before. You know what, you know what they make on before 90 days? Before 90 days is the lowest paying spinoff of the whole franchise because they know that people go on the show with fake relationships just, just so they could like film it. That's why I said, how many people from before are actually still a couple? 4%. And I think I'm being generous. 
the thing is with the show is that thank you rage the thing is with the show is that you know you want to know what it is it's 500 per episode and every couple isn't in every episode so basically at the end of the day you're walking you're walking away with this with i don't know 5 grand But with that, you get like, you know, um, listen, you could, you could sell like your, 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 your shit tea, right? Um, your fat fib, fat fib fun fucking partnerships or, and then like you get into the realm of like ple uh, free plastic surgery, um, because you're on the show. So even though the show pays you nothing. Like, you know, you get endorsements, like Margaret would say, from from Jersey. You get endorsements. And, like, you know, it might be a 1,000 per episode now, but it, it's, trust me, it's, TLC is laughing all the way to the bank with all this stuff, and they pay their cast nothing. They pay them nothing. Why do you think 60% of the cast is on OnlyFans? Why? And if you thought those same people wanted to be like really accredited, and I'm not mocking anybody who's on OnlyFans, but you know, there's there's a fine line between wanting to be on TV and wanting to make money. Like, listen, people do documentaries where where they don't get paid nothing, but they want their truth out, and that's endearing, right? Um, but these people, a lot of them, go on there thinking they're going to be like, you know, the next big thing. And then they all fall to porn and OnlyFans. I mean, like, Jesus. And now you have Stephanie, you know, the fart jar girl. Like, look at what this show has produced. But nobody talks about that. It's fine. Selling... And Stephanie made, we were talking about that on the live we just finished. Stephanie made like a million and, and, and she farted so much she had to go to the hospital. I love you too, Heather. Heather's been my girl for a long time. Um, and I, I have not been blogging because um, obviously there's like a lot of stuff going on in my life right now and I just... I don't care about like if a, if a cast member wants to post something and they're lying and it's just it's so rookie to me at this point, you know. And and all these new cast members are so rookie. Um, <laughs> it, it's rookie. And like you know, back in the day, you know, when you were on ninety day. You know, you had a hundred thousand followers like by week three. And these people can't accumulate anything because people are tired of the show. I am the I will raise my hand. And I'm only doing it now because A, I was uh, I'm not gonna say begged or forced, but like uh you know, I've been talking about 90 Day Fiance for a decade, and uh, I can't hold back. And I know people watch this show, and they think it's real, and this, that, and the other. And I can't sit on a live and be like, oh, my God, I believe this fully. What a joke. Every scene is redone, rescripted, uh, reshot. I'm not saying that's the thing about all cast members, but you, you know, if you're if you're picking up what I'm putting down, so oh, I just sound like Stephanie. If you're picking up what I'm putting down, and like you know, um, but listen, if you want to keep watching me cover 90 Day, and if you want me to do it, 
like tonight was the kickoff kickoff of it, and like it it's just gonna get worse from here on out. So if you're gonna make me watch this show and recap it, it's gonna get like I'm just gonna I'm tired of you know people think I don't hold back I I do and but this show is bullshit. Bullshit. I mean, I've been sent scripts. You know, the OTFs, you know, production, you know, production might tell a cast member to tell their spouse, hey, why don't you tell your spouse to, um, buy groceries and then why don't you pick a fight with that spouse type of shit well lori like you know that's good but for me and you know i know a lot and I can't feign ignorance with this show anymore. I can't. And seeing Amanda masquerade her dead husband that died a week before the father of her children. And then she's with this Razvan guy. Are you kidding me? That's not right. It's absolutely not right. And then, like, they bring... And here's the other thing. They bring this the husband's box everywhere. Oh, do you want to sleep with daddy tonight? And they bring the box that that it, that's not healthy. It's not. It's so fucking bad. My mother was cremated. My mother died when I was nine. It, 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 it's just by doing that, you're not allowing your children to grieve and i know they're super young and i hope that they never i hope that i i hope that they forget this i really do i mean bringing your husband's ashes around in the living room with the with his face on it um bringing him in the back seat of the car like seat belting him in that is by far rancid and fuck you TLC for even allowing because they want ratings they want people to talk about it, and here we are talking about it right um that is as rancid as it gets let me tell you something about me and why I feel the way I do about this um you know my mom died by her own ways when I was nine and um when I was in my grandmother's house because she raised me after my mom had passed there was this box in my closet and it was just always there and, you know regular like you know not a walk-in closet like you know a sliding door closet like that most bedrooms have that, like that where it's not like the master bedroom you know what I'm talking about like the two white doors and you, you slide it over like that thing so there was a box in my closet um for a long time and i i i don't want uh, it's not though give me one second Sorry about that. Um, okay. So, um, and like when my mom died, I was in third grade. You know, it's young. Uh, and then there's this, this secret box in my closet. And my grandmother said, don't touch it, leave it alone. Because it's there and, you know, it's storage or whatever. Um, and it took me seven years 
Because when I was 16, still in my bedroom, right? I had asked my grandmother, I said, I need to know what this is before I open it. And you know what it is, right? My mother. And my grandmother. And my grandmother said that she kept, she kept her in my closet because she wanted to watch over me and be there with me. And, and that didn't go over well with me. Because there were times when um, I just wanted to see, like, I wanted to go to the grave, you know, cemetery and um, see my mom's grave and whatever. And I was always told it was too far, like, in another day. And um, I had no idea that she was cremated. And she was in my closet for, like, the last seven years. So this whole, this whole weirdness with, and like, I, I was nine and I couldn't imagine being four or three. And there's so many things wrong with this. There's so many things wrong with this. And listen, I was a teacher and you have to take your share of um, psychology classes, you know, children's psych, adolescent psych, um, and there's just so many goddamn things wrong with that. And by her masquerading like it, it's wrong it's so wrong it's just it's just as wrong as it can be no i i gotta get my point out give me a second Sorry. Um, so that's my issue. And then like, here's the other thing. So your husband died in January, February, and by this November, December, you're filming with a new man. See, my hate for her, and we're one episode in, but I can tell you why I... There's and production is wrong. Everything is wrong about this story, but they don't care. Production doesn't care. TLC don't care. They they want people watching and talking about it. Amanda had said, "Wait for it. I'll get there." Amanda had said that, like you know, her son. Was asking when daddy was going to get back from heaven. Oh my God. That split my heart in 8 million fucking ways. Because I asked the same thing about my mother when she passed. And I was a lot older. Well, you know, nine to four, but I still was hoping that, you know.
And um, <sighs> how could this be okay? Where her husband's body is not even cold yet and that's the fucking truth i i hate me for all you want but like you you don't move on that quickly like god forbid if anything ever happened to cody i know i would never marry again you know and you know it's a it's a choice that everybody has to make but for me i couldn't be with somebody else because I've always felt that Cody's my soulmate and no one could ever fill his shoes after that. And like, listen, people move on. And, but for me, like Betty White and Alan Ludden, right? Like Betty, when Alan Ludden died in like 1978 or whatever, Betty White for the last, what, 40 or 50 years of her life never was with another man again, because that was, that was her soulmate. Um, so for me, I couldn't do it. I couldn't. Um, and I'm sure it's different for everybody else. I'm sure that people in the chat right now that, you know, has had a spouse that passed away and, um, you know, you have to move on. And that, that that's my personal feeling on that. Um, but that's how I feel about this situation. And again, it's not even the husband passing away. It's about the kids. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. In the scope of like a few months, daddy's dead. And now, now she's leaving her kids again. She's leaving her children when they're asking when the dad's coming back from heaven and she's leaving her two very impressionable children to fend for their own with their aunt or their or her sister or wherever she dropped them off to go for to go to Romania for three weeks to be with this new guy. I mean, it, it's so disgusting. It's so disgusting. Do you know what you're doing to your kids? Because you better believe you don't want them turning out like me. You don't. You actually came out really well. You don't want them turning out like me because I have so many issues from my childhood. A million. And to leave your kids for a month or three weeks to go chase down this person so you could be on TV. And, you know, what's this world is a crazy place, right? How do you know that, like, you know, you're going to Romania to meet a stranger? A stranger. Look, look how well it worked with Chris and Jamie. Don't you know that same stranger danger? Steer clear. And you were leaving your kids for a three weeks a month to meet some stranger on the internet? What if you were like, what's that? Taken. What if you were taken like that? What's that movie? Yeah, what's taken. his name? Uh, That's the show. Taken. The guy. Uh, taken. What's the guy's name? Liam, uh, Liam Neeson? Yeah. Um... What, why would you put your, your children in the position to possibly lose not only their dad, but their mother by going to this foreign country where you've never been to meet some man you've never met? And that's okay with everybody? All these people on Instagram saying, oh my God, she should be able to do what she wants. I don't care about her. I care about the kids. And maybe it's because I, I've lost a parent young. And maybe it's because I have a fucked up childhood. 
but I, it, it, it's a new all time low for me with this show and the cast and whatever. And I, I, I don't, And what if, God forbid, she went to Romania and never came back? And then what of her kids? I mean, there's war, right? Like, just like one country over in the Ukraine. You know, Europe is like a little volatile, right? Right now. And... You don't know what's going to happen from day to day. And should Amanda be happy and have a man? Absolutely. But like. That's why I get mad because of the kids. And I, I, I must have sold off about like a hundred people on Instagram tonight. And that's why I did the IG live because I'm like, fuck these people. I'm, I'm over. I'm tired. Um, because these people watch the show and like, oh, it's a real love story. And, and who cares if she didn't grieve? And who cares if she left her kids, whose husband just died? What is wrong with you guys? What the fuck? What is wrong? What is wrong with y'all? That you can watch this overly produced fake scripted TV show and still defend a mother who leaves her who leaves her kids for a month whose whose dad just died we're not talking about years we're talking about months it's horrible it is the most disgusting thing I have ever seen on this show. By far. This takes the cake of shit I witnessed on 90 Day Fiance and this by far is the worst thing I've ever seen. Horrible. <laughs> and you know, I'm sure that all of you have kids in this chat. I mean, I don't because, you know, I, I can't. I, if I could, I would have had, you know, I, I've i always wanted a child. Um, I've always wanted to be a dad. But to, to go to, I mean, like, you know, and... In the chat, can someone tell me how long did I have a notebook? Hold on. How long did um did Amanda say she was talking to Razvan? Was it six months? I think she said. Well, I'm trying to find my notes. And that's disgusting. Four months. So, in four months, she broke up she broke up with him six times. And for what? So now, again, in grand 90 day fiance form, we have another entertainer. We have another model. We have another actor, like God, like, why don't we see these people on Broadway and in the movies? All these actors and entertainers that this show is fucking pumping out, pumping out. All these, all these people. I have not seen one person in a sitcom, a movie, on Broadway, in a play. I, I, I haven't seen it. Has, have any of you seen anything? And what gets me the maddest is that these people are on Instagram are just saying, oh, that's okay. I, like, wow. Like, I feel bad for your children. <sighs> and
And you know what's going to happen, right? They're not going to make it. I, I watched this show for for 10 years and I did all, all it needed for me for me to, to make a decision was as soon as she said that Razvan was an entertainer and an actor and a model, I go, okay. <laughs> Horrible. So she's gonna leave her kids that just lost their dad months ago for a month so she can go so she can be on tv and film with this guy in romania that just wants to be that just so desperately wants to promote his brand and they showed him they showed him with his shirt off you know in the shower you know how good looking is his six pack this and the other horrible he's doing like you know you know like probably like b-rated porn right like you know if you'd watch like you know usa up all night um you know like that low-key like porn right um and for four months she broke up with him six times And now you're on TV and you're going to go to Romania and leave your kids behind. Horrible. Horrible. And the sad part is that these shows will be in perpetuity like meaning like they will be there forever and when her kids are old enough they're gonna see this they're gonna see it I don't care if she, like, you know, I don't care if she found some, you know, I do a little bit. I do. I mean, like, I'm very, like, biased on this, and that's why I feel the way I do, because not only did I watch every fam every family member that I loved out of cancer one by one by one by one over the course over the course of like 10 years just they the debt that debt all well before their time um i've given three eulogies I, I i've been to more funerals than weddings birthday parties christenings confirmations bar mitzvahs combined um so I just don't believe her. I don't believe a, what I see is some person who lost their husband and now is trying to be like, you know, and that's a great storyline, ain't it? Isn't that a good storyline. My husband just died and now I'm trying to find love again a week later. And TLC is just eating it up. Eating, oh yeah, oh, this is great. <laughs> That's fine. My issue is with the kids. That's my issue. And I'm sure there are people here. I, I don't know if there are people here who lost a sibling, a uh, sibling, a parent young. I did. And losing a parent young. There's just nothing worse. Because then you wonder if you're the reason why they died. 
my situation's a little different. My mom decided to take her life. Like she didn't, she didn't, she didn't die of cancer. Um, everybody else did, but my mom. But regardless, losing a parent is rough to, to any age. But when you're when you are under ten. I still hope that I'd see my mom again. And using the box, like the cremation box with his picture on it and TLC is filming this. Oh my God. What is wrong? Horrible. It's, it's those kids will never grieve their father. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Trying to hold it together. Give me a second. Oh my god. <laughs> no, I'm muted right now. I gotta get my shit together. I can't talk about this. No, they can't hear. No. Yeah, because they're all gonna want to, to re all the haters are all one of gonna fucking replay this shit. They make money off me. No. Oh my god. Why do I even bother with this? I don't even know. I don't know. Why is this fucking show? <sighs> <sighs> Those kids will never, ever go. And I don't want a three and a four year old to grieve, but like those, if, as long as you are parading their dead father in some fucking weird cremation box, they will never be right. I promise you they won't. They're not, they're not gonna grow. And then you are, you're having this strange man talk to them on FaceTime. So fucked up. It is so wrong. I'm sorry. There's nothing you could tell me. I mean, I tell me in the chat how, like, there's nothing you can.
It's horrible. <laughs> Then she leaves them. For all those kids know, she's never coming back either. And there's so many things that could happen when you travel especially abroad, like to Europe, like, you know, you can be taken, right? Because she's young and pretty, right? So there's that. Meeting a stranger. He might kidnap you. I don't know. Um, but for me... Why did she have to date somebody internationally? She's a good looking girl, right? She doesn't need to, you know, I mean, I, I could see people, you know, people on the show like that, you know, aren't like, you know, that are hard on the eyes. Uh, you know, listen, we all watch the show. We know that this woman is 30 when she's 30. She has her whole life in front of her. You know what? She's 31. When my mom died, I she was 33. I don't know. It, it I, I don't know why this is hitting so close to home to for me, but like it just reminds me of me and my sister. Because we didn't know it was coming. And to lose a parent is one thing. And then for, for the other sole remaining parent to leave. To meet some stranger. On the internet. The money she's spending. To go meet this man. I mean, it's not a free trip. You know, I know TLC didn't pay for it. So, in my from what I know and ascertain throughout the years of being like the, the 90 day blogger, I can tell you that this woman is full of fucking shit. No, no, no. And let's talk about Razvan for a fucking second. Um, he is, again, I mean, like, how many entertainers do we have on this show now? Everybody is an entertainer. Everybody. There's Debbie and Oshama, and, and, like, you know, they, they just, they want to get on the show. So they get endorsements and make money off of nothing and whatever. That's how, that, this is how this works. And to the idiots still watching this show and Oh, this is a real love story. It's not. It's not. 
Back in the day, yes, absolutely. But now, you know, who's been watching this show since day one? Put a chat. Put a one in the chat if you've been watching this show since day one. Since since you know, Pow was on the show. Um, when Danielle was on the show, like who's been watching it since since it started? I want I, I want your opinion on something because you can tell when there was a break when, and I'll tell you when it was in. 2019 because back then um the relationships were, were still real and that's before you know they had like you know happily well they had happily but like you know before TLC saw how much money they were making from it and I mean, like, how many franchise spinoffs? 35? And when I say 35, I'm not exaggerating. And I would say, like, when it when it stopped being real was when... I would say season six was, like, the last real season of Night and Day Fiance. When Larissa and Colt were there, Ashley and Jay... Kalani and Espoilu, I I would say that was like the last real season of this show. And I've hung out with Kalani and Espoilu. I've hung out with I've hung out with all of them. You know, Phyllis said earlier, you know. <laughs> It doesn't matter. But I will be damned. You know, and the people on IG, like they watch a show. They're in like they're in like all like the bloggers posts. So are they really that surprised? Amanda, 31, Razvan, 45, when, you, know, you know, whatever, however old he is, porn star, entertainer, and, like, you leave your kids when their dad just died months, 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 not years, not decades, months. You leave your kids. And I couldn't imagine being their kid, her kid. And hoping that, that their mom comes home. It's horrible. It's fucking horrible. It's bad. It's really. I lost both my parents young. And it's probably why why I'm so upset about this. Because I lost both. My mom died. But there was like a you know, rest with my dad. And pretty much I lost my mom and my dad at the same time. And I was raised by my grandmother. 
and I have a shitload of unresolved issues due to it. Um, a shitload. But the cremation box, I mean, that's, there aren't words. And I want to, in my head, was she doing that for camera to make her life more interesting? Like, is she really, you know, when they eat dinner, is the dad box with the ashes? Um, like, you know, does he have a chair for himself? And then you're going to put this man who wants to be famous, no matter how hard he tries, and put them in your children's lives. She says, oh, he's just a friend, but like, come, help, you know. And that goes back to the point where like, you know. People that watch this show are stupid. <laughs> I'm stupid right with you. Um, but it, it, it is just wrong. And let's pray that her kids don't remember any of this, but you know, what's going to happen? Like when, the, you know, a few years from now, they're going to like look and see. And then, you know, then I guess she'll be on Pillow Talk with Boring Bilal and Shaida or Jibbery and Miona. Like, who wants to hear their opinions on anything? I don't. Because all they are concerned about is making money. And, like, you know, that, sh that should be, you know, it, that's... The driving force in life, make money, get a good job, pay your bills, have nice things. I get that in that regard, but I wonder how many people wrote their name and blood on Satan's contract to make that happen. But it, it, it'll be her pleading with St. Peter, not me. <laughs> and trust me when I say this, you know, I've been around longest. I've been around longer than anybody else when it comes to this show. Every, you know. Like Shaida and Bilal, their pregnancy it was like it was like their storyline for like what the two seasons they were on, and then people I would post about them and how dare you talk about our pregnancy, bitch! You were on a fucking TV show and that's your storyline. Like you know, Her two kids are so beautiful and angelic. Like, I just, like, you know, them, like, I just, I, like, and, like, the thought of, like, her leaving and leaving her kids alone with, like, a family member, like, so she could be on TV and promote this asshole's agenda? And we're supposed to sit here and watch this and be like, okay, no, not me. Sorry. And I hope that she's listening right now. She probably is because 
listen. And Amanda, I say to your face, you are a shit fucking mother. You are. You are a shit mother. Because I bet that every day you were gone, your kids were crying, asking like your aunt or your sister, when's mommy coming back? And that... is unforgivable. She's probably banking on the fact that like, you know, her kids will, you know, they won't remember. Oh God. And just to be on this TV show that pays you nothing. Pays you nothing. They pay you nothing. So you're probably going to want to get the, the, the plastic surgery that you want, right? Because you want you signed up. You, you wrote your name in blood. And that's it. But Doesn't matter. So come for me all you want. I will put you on one of the many lists of people that hate me. Which list you want on? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Which list do you want to be on that um that you hate me? Oh. I'd be But she wants to be on TV, and people are applauding her for it. Sure, girl, leave your kids. Like, that's the part. They're saying, sure, girl, leave your kids. Go get your love. What the fuck is wrong with everybody? What is wrong with everybody? We live in a world where, <laughs> let's be honest, this is okay. Um, men are the new face of Tampax. There's ads with men wearing sports bras. Like, I, I don't understand how that would work. Like, you know, I'm like, I, I don't, I don't get it. I think I'm too. Us Gen Xers are relics where you're just relics and this new generation of people who want to erase women and gays like the fact that if you're a, a, a young boy or a, a young man like you, you feel like you like men there are people now and it's legal and they tell you you shouldn't you know you should become you, you should be trans if you feel that way. I mean, there's so much shit going on. There are clinics where like a 12 year old can go into and get hormones without parental consent. Like God, like what the fuck is wrong? And you know what? 
when I would, you know, I've always felt like different from everyone else. Um, but I never wanted to be a woman. I love being a man. I, I you know, I, and I love men. Um, but like now these days, if, well, if you like, if you're a guy and you like, um, guys, you need to like become a woman and they're telling this to eight, nine, 10, 12 year olds. And they're, it, it's insane to me. Like, you know, men competing in women's sports. Oh my God. Horrible. Um, and everyone says that's okay. And you can't question it. You can't question it because then you will be canceled and ridiculed and be labeled a transphobe or a racist or whatever, xenophobe, whatever, whatever, like, you know, the new hot word is, um, And, like, they have people, like, telling these young children, children, that, like, you know, oh, you're, you need to be, you know, you need to change sexes. It, it's, this is so goddamn, like, it's, like, the same thing, like, happening on 90 Day, like, you know. You know, people, you know, I've always marched to the beat of my own drummer. I don't, I don't fall in line with anybody or anything. I, I, I stand true with my own beliefs. You know, you think it's easy being a gay, married, Democrat, Trump supporter? But let me tell you something. <sighs> What's going on in this world, in our country, in the, in the United States? You know, I can go into a ladies room right now and say hi i'm a woman like there's no more sexes anymore how is there no more sexes anymore now you're not male or female now you're just like question mark what And like, you know, back in the day, you know, when like gay marriage wasn't legal. That's, that's the only thing I wanted. I wanted to be, I wanted to marry my love. That's all. I wanted to marry the man that I loved. And like, I know people could not stand gay marriage, but like, it is what it is, you know. That was like my cause. Um, but I also said, <coughs> you give somebody an inch, they take a mile. And all the hard work that people in my generation have done with like, you know, gay, gay marriage, like we did great. And now it's it's not good enough anymore. It's not. It's not in this, like, this whole gender confusion. Like, I, I, I can't, I can't wrap my head around it. I can't.
Just like I can't wrap my head around Amanda leaving her kids. How do you do that? How do you do that? And yes, but like, you know, I thought I was weird, right? Because I like guys at an early age. And if this was like, you know, I'm 44. So I guess if this was like 35 years ago, someone would tell me, hey, go to this clinic and become a woman because that's how you should feel. But at on the other side of the time, like these people are saying, well, well, a man and a woman should be together. So, but also that doesn't work because being straight sucks. I don't know. But they are trying to erase women, women, just in general, women and gays off the map now. I don't know how women, even liberal women, like I don't understand how they can allow a man to be like the spokesperson for Nike bras or a man to be the spokesperson for Tampax. And now they're putting tampon machines in men's rooms. And you have men on TikTok giving tutorials to women who never had their period. So I don't know, 10, 11, 12 year old girls. Oh, look at TikTok. Look at Dylan Mulvaney. <laughs> you know, like, like when you always like, you know, when you were younger to your parents, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You're too old. And that's who we are now, right? The Gen Z, the, the Gen Xers are now too old to know any better. Now it's like in like the Gen Y or Z or, Z or whatever. And I don't know. But what I do know is that like, I am not, I, you know, I, especially with politics, like, you know, I, I keep my opinion to myself more times, you know, more recently I've been talking about politics more often, um, but, you know, shit. And like, I'm not a parent, I'm not. So I, I can't imagine what parents that I deal with Sorry, it's late. I'm yawning. It doesn't mean I'm not interested. I'm just tired. Um, but women should be pissed that, like, you know, this man is the is promoting Tampax and Nike sports bras and. You're taking money out of uh, out of women's wallets. Um, I don't know how I got here. All I'm saying is, like, is it this everything's fucked up. The show is fucked up. Ninety Fiance is like beyond. It's foobar at this point. And um, 
if I'm going to keep talking about it, I'm going to be just as vocal. And anybody with two eyes and a fucking brain can see what's happening on this show. The catfish guy, Tyray. Oh my god. That whole fake scene of production. Well, we found out that like this 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 woman's a man. Well, why didn't they tell Yolanda that about Williams? Williams, where is production when Yolanda was getting catfished? Tell me. Why didn't that why didn't production have this whole big scene with Yolanda about Williams? Because production knew. Oh, and by the way, Yolanda and Williams, another 90 day before before 90 days like failure. Where is production telling Yolanda that? Where was that moment? I love Yolanda. She's like one of my favorite people. I'm not, you know, I'm just saying like, I, I really do love Yolanda. I, I like, I like, I, we're good. And um, she's a sweetheart. And, um, but where was Yolanda? Where was production when Yolanda, you know, was Williams and production knew. So why is it different now? Because people are tired of the bullshit. So now you have like your catfish story, um, Tyree, and like this woman who is Cardi B by means of uh, some other person. I don't remember the name. And then like they keep filming. So then he goes to meet the male who catfished him. Like this is catfish with Neve and Max. Bullshit. Bullshit. It's all bullshit. And that's why I hate talking about this show. And, you know, to what Velvet just said, like, you know, there are trans, like, who I, you know, fully believe in, like, you know, and do the work, like Gabe, right? Uh, or, and I, I I hate to use Caitlyn Jenner as an, as an example, but, you know, because Caitlyn has more money than God, so it was very easy for Caitlyn to do what she needed to do. But in Caitlyn's defense... She felt that way for a long time and, and she had the money to, to change it. Um, Gabe, you know, he put the work in, but I, I have no respect for just all these people on TikTok who want to make money. Just like all these people on YouTube who want to make money because they have no talent. And they want to make money off of uh, talking to other people. And, like, that's this is what this is. Because YouTube pays the money to stalkers and harassers. You know, they can't they can't give it out fast enough. Um, and I can't with these, these people who just, you know, throw on a Party City wig. And like, I'm like, I'm a woman! Respect me! I mean, I have, I have a million wigs. I can't go into the ladies' room in any place because uh, that's crazy. Sorry. Maybe I'm a relic. Maybe I'm too old fashioned. I don't know. But shit's got to change. You know, there are just people that go live on TikTok. They put a wig on. And they're, they're not even like, they go, well, I'm trans now. So I'm going to go into the ladies' bathroom and sit there and watch people. Legit TikTok videos. 
And then people are saying, oh, I love your, I love your journey. Ugh. Get the fuck out of here. So circling back, because I'm sure, well, listen, people that hate me will call me a transphobe, a racist, a xenophobe. So that, that's something new. So I accept that. And no one in this world is not a skosh racist. No one is. All these people calling, you're a racist. Like they never laughed at a joke before. It's sad. If anyone knows anything about me, as I think you do, as you've been watching me for years, I've had all genders, all colors, all nationalities on my channel. All, you know, through the years. I have stuck up for people who are like green. I've had people on my panel across all race, the whole racial plane. And these people want to label me this, that, and the other. And I, I do have an opinion. And like, I'm not going to say I'm not fully racist. Everybody's fully racist. Everybody's racist to an extent. Everyone is. The only person who is not fully racist is Jesus Christ. And that's it. But if I truly felt, if I was truly racist, like they want to say I am, then you would see nothing but white people on my channel. And like, listen, I, <sighs> it is what it is. This cancel culture, all this bullshit, it's just. I don't know how people can sit home all day and just get offended by everything everybody says. Do you guys do that? Are you like in the chat? Like, do you sit home all day long and watch TV? And, like, I'm offended. I'm going to bitch. I'm offended. I'm going to bitch. I'm offended. Like, oh my God. How are they breathing? They're so offended by everything and everyone says. Well, then just don't watch it. Get off social media. I, I don't know what to tell you. People on YouTube. I'm offended. Trigger warning. God. Until the wrath comes down, the revelation when Jesus re comes back to the earth, I'll I'll, I'll wait for, for my judgment on that. Oh my God! It's four o'clock in the morning. I gotta end this. And that's why I'm so tired. I gotta go. I gotta wake up in a few hours to go to work. I didn't realize it was so late. I gotta go. You all have a great night. And um, if you don't like what I have to say, start a YouTube channel and make money off me. It's my best advice to you because everybody else is doing it. <laughs> Mm.
there you go. Oh, hey, Joe. Let me help you out, Sam's. How am I being ignorant? I'm not. Not. I'm not. I'm being honest. You probably think that Sam, uh, that um, a man is okay with leaving her kids behind. So, good for you. I'll see y'all later.